You're behind the times if you haven't heard of these recent solar panel breakthroughs. Every year brings new discoveries and improvements to solar panel technology. So stay tuned to see what the future has in store for harvesting the sun's power. One of the key terms you'll hear a lot in this video is efficiency rate. This rate is the ratio of the sunlight a solar cell takes into the amount of energy it produces. It's an important term which is used to help calculate which solar cells are the most productive. The first developments we'll look at relate to organic solar cells, which are solar panels that consist of organic matter printed onto flexible material such as plastic. These solar panels hold great potential because of their versatility. The process for printing them is as simple as printing a newspaper, so there are endless applications for these cells. That being said, they don't quite pack the same punch as the traditional solar panel that you see, say on the top of a house. Their efficiency sits around 10%, which is considerably lower than the 25% rate of standard silicon-based solar cells. However, 10% is still good, plus they retain that efficiency rate for at least 20 years and because they can utilize ambient light, they don't lose efficiency while indoors. These cells have great potential in the wearable and personal tech market. Now, onto their developments. The first one we'll go over revolves around the term chiral. Chiral simply means an object or molecule is asymmetrical and does not line up with its mirror image. DNA is chiral. Our hands are chiral. Chiral molecules help boost natural processes like photosynthesis. Achiral molecules are the opposite of chiral and are less effective. Now, up to this point, conjugated polymers, a key component of organic solar cells, have only been achiral. That is, until researchers at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign discovered they could use a solvent on the achiral polymers which resulted in their transition into chiral molecules. After the solution evaporated, the achiral polymers formed into helices, which is the plural of helix. This is huge for the entire scientific world. Why? Because the formation of a helix means the achiral conjugated polymers are now chiral, and polymers switching from achiral to chiral is a very, very uncommon event. I wish I could dive into what this means for science and tech as a whole, but we're looking at solar energy today. And in the context of organic solar cells, the translation of achiral polymers into chiral polymers means there's enormous potential for organic cells to improve their energy production. It will take some tweaking and mass production processes need to be established first. But this is a major step toward moving organic cells up a notch on the solar energy ladder. Another breakthrough with organic cells is with whole transporting materials, or HTMs. Electrons are an essential piece of creating an electrical current, but there are also holes, which play an equally important role. Holes are weird, though. They aren't actually molecules themselves so much as a literal hole where an electron does not exist. The only reason we know holes exist is because there's empty space where an electron could be but isn't. HTMs are materials that move these holes as a part of creating an electric current. The problem with the current state of HTMs is that their durability is low. One of the most commonly used HTMs is called PDOT PSS. This HTM disperses in water and is highly acidic, which kills its efficiency and stability. Researchers from the Huangzhong University of Science and Technology and the Institute of Materials for Electronics and Energy Technology created a new variation of this HTM known as PDOT F. This HTM has low acidity and disperses in alcohol, which means it can get wet without going all Wicked Witch of the West. Its efficiency clocks in at 15% and during testing, it maintained over 12% efficiency after 1300 hours of full power use. Again, these improvements in organic cells don't show a lot in terms of numbers and power, especially compared to silicon-powered cells but they're indications of rapid improvement in the organic cell industry. These solar cells may not power your home, but they might just power your watch, along with a number of other small devices found inside your home. We're moving up from organic cells to perovskites. Perovskites are a manufactured crystal and could be great semiconductors. They're cheap 
light and have an efficiency rate equivalent of the 25% rate of silicon cells. They're a fantastic alternative to silicon except for one major problem. They break really, really easily. As in, some perovskites were broken while carried across the lab during testing kind of easily. In the field, perovskites drop 10% of their maximum efficiency after only a few months of use, which is mind-blowing when silicon cells claim a 30-40 to 40 year field life. There's very little durability in perovskites, and until recently, no one has known what to do about it. First, in April, it was discovered that adding organometallic compounds to the perovskites not only helped improve their durability, but reduced the loss of efficiency. With these compounds introduced, the perovskites maintained 24.5% efficiency after 1500 hours of use, which is only a 2% loss. Second, teams from the University of Cambridge and the Okinawa Institute of Technology worked together to find that defects in the perovskites were behind the crystal's issues. They discovered that minuscule pockets of empty space were formed throughout the perovskite crystals during the manufacture process, and these pockets, dubbed trap clusters, were inhibiting the conduction of electricity and contributing to the short field life of the crystals. Eliminating these trap clusters is as simple as fine-tuning the manufacturing process, and when scaled up to mass production, means perovskites are suddenly in the top tier of solar cell materials. And, when used in conjunction with silicon on a solar cell, the combination puts out a 30% efficiency rate, which is above the rate of each individual material. That brings us to the final breakthroughs for today. I've mentioned them a few times already, and now I'm going to talk about them fully. Silicon solar cells. These are by far the most popular and most effective solar power cells. The vast majority of solar panels you see are made from silicon sheets neatly arranged onto frames. As mentioned before, they typically max out at 25% efficiency, and they have a very long lifespan. The University of Surrey produces a signature honeycomb pattern silicon cell. The honeycomb serves to capture some of the light which is usually lost after it bounces off the panel's surface. This year, they showed improvements to their design. The team at Surrey showed 25% improvement over their previous panels, and their silicon cells now sit at a 21% efficiency rate. This is lower than the current standard, however, the improvement shows potential in their design. Perhaps with further study and testing, their cells can become top contenders on the market. And now, we've reached the big breakthrough. This one isn't more important than the others, however, in terms of raw numbers, this breakthrough makes the biggest leap out of everything we've gone over today. The National Renewable Energy Laboratory designed a new silicon panel which broke all records of solar efficiency. They stacked three layers of materials, with gallium indium phosphide on top, gallium arsenide in the middle, and gallium indium arsenide on the bottom. Also, the middle layer contained 300 quantum wells. The three different materials capture different wavelengths of light, and the quantum wells help gather more light, all of which came together to produce a whopping 39.5% efficiency. In 2019, a 47% efficiency rate was achieved, but that was under highly concentrated light. This 39.5 rate came from light settings similar to what the sun produces, so the new design shows immense promise for practical use. This outstrips even the combined power of silicon and perovskites. What does that mean for the future of silicon solar panels? What does any of it mean for the future of solar energy? As I said before, none of these developments are more important than the other. If anything, the seemingly small discoveries, like with the chiral molecules or the perovskite traps, are more important because they affect the core fundamentals behind the production of efficient solar cells. Again, every year brings new discoveries and improvement. So what do you think the next 12 months will have in store? Make sure to check out the video on the left. It's what YouTube thinks you would want to watch next. On the right, you have a playlist of our most popular videos. Thanks for watching.